And Hunter Biden is not the only one facing legal woes. Fulton County Judge Scott McAfee just torpedoed District Attorney Fawny Willis's legal strategy against former President Donald Trump and 18 co-defendants. The judge ordering Willis to try two defendants first because they demanded a speedy trial. That trial begins on October 23rd. The other 17 defendants will be tried in another trial at another time. That's assuming that the United States Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit does not order that five of those 17 trials or defendants be held in federal court and not Fulton County Court. In the order today, Judge Scott McAfee also noted the logistical nightmare of trying a case in the Fulton County Courthouse. He wrote, the Fulton County Courthouse simply contains no courtroom adequately large enough to hold all 19 defendants, their multiple attorneys and support staff, the sheriff's deputies, court personnel, and the state's prosecutorial team. Relocating to another larger venue raises security concerns that cannot be rapidly addressed, end of quote. Now, another key ruling today by the judge was to deny requests to delay and pause the prosecution of the former White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, and the other defendants seeking to have their cases moved to federal court. Criminal Defense Attorney Jeff Brown joins me. Nice to see you, Jeff. And I see this ruling as, you know, that's almost a nightmare for the prosecutor. Now, she, now what's she going to do? Because she's got to try these at least two cases. So she's yeah, turned no, upside Christmas, down. Christmas came early to the other defendants. They have an opportunity now to watch the trial. And as a trial lawyer, this really excites me because I get to see not only the jury pool that I might be getting later on, but I get to see how the prosecutor reacts in trial. I get to see what buttons kind of push her. I'll see whether or not she leads, like almost all prosecutors leads. But then I get to see how the judge reacts with that. I get to anticipate what the judge is going to do on certain issues and evidentiary issues. And then there's the substance of the case. I get to see at least the substance of the case as it applies to, to those two defendants. So for, for the other 17, this is, this is fantastic. It couldn't have been a better rule. Except when you miss one thing, is that the judge says there's not room for 19. I don't think they have room, yeah. room for 17. So it may not just be two trials she's trying, but okay. she may be trying four or five on the same evidence. Yeah, so I think what's going to happen is we'll go to these two, and then I think it'll blow up on them. So then there's going to be some real questions whether they try to change the information or the indictment and try to alter it for the next coming trials, because I don't think that they can do 17 defendants. So, yeah, this, this is just a cluster, and... I don't see this case going to trial for a while, but it's certainly a, a great result for the other 17. Don't you think she must have seen this coming? I mean, you, you indict 19 people, you're going you're gonna to have this problem, number one. And you know that someone's going to make a demand for a speedy trial, and you have a right to a speedy trial. She, knows the, she must know the defense lawyers get together and talk. I mean, it's not like they're, you know, they're 19, they're in a silo each. I mean, they talk to each other and they, they, they coordinate this. Yeah, I don't know how she didn't anticipate this. Um, it, it, I think it kind of shed some light as to her thought process, because I haven't thought any of this was well thought out throughout uh, from the very beginning. And I think this is just another example of that. I, I think this is a, a state court prosecutor that's, that's doing this and running the show, but not actually a trial lawyer, because you would think that you would know that you're, there's not a single courtroom in the courthouse that can handle 19 defendants. So, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, well, what's going on over there? I mean, who's really running this show? Uh, but again, um, at least the judge did the right thing. I'm, I'm glad to see the judge at least understood that you can't force the other 17 defendants to go to trial just because two claim speedy trial. And of course, you've got the problem is that you've got now um, at least one defendant in the U.S. Court of Appeals on the removal from state to federal court. The other four are trailing behind. They haven't made up to the court of appeals, but it's possible that, that she could also have another trial in federal court or maybe multiple trials in federal courts because they're on slightly different tracks. Yeah, that should probably be resolved, though, by the time this trial starts to heat up. Uh, I would expect a ruling on that. So we'll, we'll get those no that notice or that ruling probably November or December at the latest. Uh, but, yeah, so then, then what happens? Is she going to try to go over to federal court and try this case or try to hand it off to an assistant U.S. attorney and say, hey, pick up my garbage? Uh, I'd like to see that. Jeff Brown, thank you. All right, Greta, thanks.